Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the complete uh, blockchain developer series. In this video I am going to show you guys how to interact with smart contracts using Truffle console. Uh, we will uh, also talk about reading and writing data to the blockchain. Uh, we will talk about transactions, we will talk about calls and we will also uh, talk and uh, interact with the ABI or application binary interfaces and uh, why do we need them. So before diving in, I kindly, uh, kindly ask you guys to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like for the YouTube algorithm. And uh, let's start by <coughs> uh, taking a look at, at reading and writing data to the blockchain. So the Ethereum network and uh, all blockchains as a whole uh, makes a distinction between writing and uh, reading data to the network. Uh, writing data is called a transaction, whereas uh, reading data uh, is called a call. Uh, and uh, transaction and calls are uh, treated very differently. And uh, they have the following characteristics. Uh, transactions cost as some gas or ether, uh, meaning uh, if you want to execute a transaction on the blockchain, you have to pay some money in order for your transaction to get executed. Uh, the next uh, characteristic of a transaction is that uh, it changes the state of the network. Meaning if you uh, want to write something to the blockchain, it changes the state of the network, obviously. Uh, you are adding something to the network. And uh, the next characteristic is that uh, transactions aren't processed immediately. Uh, they take some time in order to get mined and to get executed. Uh, and uh, they are not exposing any value. I mean, they don't return any value. They only uh, return a transaction ID for you that you can use to uh, later, uh, I mean, explore the transaction and read its data from the blockchain. On the other hand, uh, calls are free. They do not cost you gas. You can read uh, data from the blockchain for free. Uh, they do not change the state of the network and they are processed immediately. Uh, you can also return value from the blockchain using calls. And uh, there are uh, different uh, tools and frameworks that you can use for reading data from the blockchain. Uh, you can use the graph uh, protocol or whatever else. Uh, so the next thing that uh, we are going to take a look at is the ABI or application binary interface. This is really important. Uh, some people call it abstract binary interface. This is a wrapper code that uh, makes interaction with your contracts really easy. I mean, it uh, uh, lets you forget about the uh, engines and gears executing under the hood. It only exposes a few uh, a JSON files for you that you can use to interact with the uh, blockchain and smart contracts using uh, to other frameworks like with TGS, Ethers, JS, and others. So uh, let's explore all these things uh, by an example. Uh, let's create an empty folder here. Call it, let's name it counter. We will just create a simple project, uh, a counter <laughs> uh, that will. Uh, we will have two functions in it that will increment and decrement the counter. So let's open up the integrated terminal and let's run the truffle init command in our empty folder. So you can see that the truffle init command uh, creates a few folders for us, the contracts folder, the migrations folder, the test folder, and uh, a truffle config.js starter configuration file for us. So in order to interact uh, with the blockchain locally, we need uh, something that we deploy our uh, smart contracts on. Uh, so in this case, we will be using Ganache. Let's open up Ganache. Ganache is a, a local blockchain, a personal blockchain that you can use to develop your applications and deploy your applications on it. So let's create a new workspace. Let's name it Travel interaction or whatever you want. You can uh, go to your project and click on truffle config.js file and save the workspace. So you can see that Ganache uh, gives us a few uh, test accounts which have 100 eaters. 
and uh, we have block section the transaction section contract section events and the log section now in the block section we have the uh, first block which is the genesis block uh, we don't have any other blocks in here yet and we don't have any other transaction or contracts so let's explore the truffle config file in the truffle config file in the module.export section and come down to the network section in here let's uncomment this uh, development portion in here you should change the port you can see that the port in ganesh is 7545 but this one is 8545 now this way you have uh, connected your application to the ganesh blockchain okay so let's start by creating a contract let's name it whatever you want but you have to end it with the dot sole extension uh, let's add the license SPDX license identifier and let's specify the Solidity version Pragma Solidity what Solidity version is here in your in our config file you should check this one 0817 0 0.8.17 now let's create our contract name it counter uh, let's uh, create a uint variable let's name it count and let's create two functions one to increment the value of the count let's count plus plus this will increase count by one and let's create another function called decrement a public function this will decrease count by one okay so don't worry if you don't understand all this stuff uh, we will explore all of them in great details in the upcoming videos for now I just want to show you guys how to uh, Interact with your smart contract locally using the truffle console and how to connect your application to the blockchain I mean to the local blockchain so uh, We are good to go now uh, before we Deploy our smart contract. We know we need to write a migration a script uh, to stage the deployment of our smart contract uh, but uh, you should uh, keep in mind one thing that you have to uh, number these migrations in order it's important because uh, when you migrate if you have uh, for example 10 contracts uh, they will execute in the order that you specify in here for them so let's uh, create our first migration name it uh, whatever you want counter migration but keep the convention in mind that uh, give it a migration okay so uh, let's import our contract now uh, the way that we import uh, our smart contract in our migration file is a little bit different this is the truffle way let's name it whatever you want and you should use the artifacts dot require command and uh, give it the name of the uh, contract now keep in mind one thing this is possible that uh, the name of the contract uh, sh can it, it can be different from the name of the source file you should give the name of the contract to it for example this is the counter contract uh, i can name it whatever i want for example counter contract now in our migration file we should not give it this file uh, this name the name of the source file because it is possible that uh, we have uh, multiple other contracts in here now this will create the ambiguity for us uh, while deploying uh, this uh, smart contract the migration file uh, would not be able to figure out which contract to migrate so for this reason it's important to give it the uh, name that is belong to your contract not the name of the source file uh, now next thing we should uh, export a function here our function should accept an object let's call it deployer now this object is going to be injected by the truffle framework while uh, we execute the truffle migrate command and the deployer function have uh, the deployer object have a function called deploy to this deploy function we have to 
pass the instance of the contract that we have imported in here okay so we are good to go we are connected to the ganache blockchain uh, we have our contract we have a migration script so let's execute the truffle migrate command as you can see that it created a build folder for us in here okay the transaction is deployed this is the transaction hash this is the block number the contract address when you deploy a contract to the blockchain this is a transaction indeed a deployment transaction this will give you a transaction hash and a contract address the same for other like, uh, for other transaction this is the account that we use to deploy our contract uh, it's the first account in our ganache blockchain this is used by default and we have a lot of other stuff the uh, stuff related to gas in here the amount of gas the gas price and all other things if you want to know more about gas and gas price and how do we calculate them i have a few other videos uh, in my channel you can take a look at that so let's see what do we have in the block section you can see that we have added one block that contains our transaction in the transaction section we can see that we have a contract creation transaction let's explore it you can see that this is the sender address which is the address of the first account that we use to deploy the contract this is the one that sent the contract creation transaction next uh, we can see we have a created contract address this is the address of the smart contract uh, we have a value gas and other things in here but you if you copy the transaction data this is uh, the byte code that is generated in this avi file for you you can search it in here control f let's paste it you can see that this is the whole byte code that is deployed to this ganache blockchain now if you are working with a, a live blockchain uh, this process will be the same this byte code will be deployed to the blockchain and the way that you will be able to interact with the functions uh, will be using this ABI file, file or this JSON file uh, so if you go to the contract section you can see that we have a counter contract in here uh, and this is the address of the contract this is the creation transaction you can see that the count value is zero right now and we have no transactions now I want to show you guys how do you call the functions on this uh, particular smart contract with the help of this ABI file now uh, let's CLS it's better to use git bash okay so let's head over to truffle console now in the truffle console you have all the accounts and other stuff you can see that the, this, these are the accounts that we have in our ganache blockchain this is this is the account that will be used by default to deploy our transactions to execute our transactions and to deploy our smart contracts now uh, let's get the instance of our deployed smart contracts uh, let's create a variable this is javascript this uh, our contract will return a promise uh, this is a synchronous code so let's uh, await it and uh, the, we should specify the name of the smart contract in here the name that's in our abi file counter contract dot deployed okay so let's explore the instance you can see that there are lots of information in this instance of our smart contract now the main things that we are interested in are the methods section <coughs> you can see that how how we can call the uh, these functions now you can see that we have a count function although we didn't uh, define this function in our smart contract now this is something that is generated automatically by solidity for you solidity creates uh, getter functions for all your public variables so you can access the value of this variable using this count function we have an increment function and a decrement function now with the help of the instance uh, let's uh, call the increment function now first uh, let's get the value of the count let's uh, call the function await instance dot uh, what's the function count 
if we take a look at the count uh, it returns a big number because if it returns a normal number for us it uh, may throw an error because the uh, amount of the range of the numbers supported by solidity is very larger than javascript and javascript may not be able to handle this so for this reason uh, solidity returns an object for us uh, later on we can use some other libraries uh, and we can convert this number to a real number now for example uh, right now you can see that the value is zero you can use the count dot to string method to see the value you can see it's zero uh, now let's create execute the increment function what's going on instance dot increment we have instance right in the instance we have a function called increment okay it's giving us an error again instance dot increment type error it's, it's not a function how is this not a function okay so in here we have it as increment it's misspelled so we should type it the way it is you can see that the transaction is executed successfully and if we come to our ganache blockchain you can see that we have a contract call this is the transaction hash this is the address the sender transaction this is the address that received the transaction which is our contracts address can see that it's uh, ended by f0 and this is the address of our contract okay now uh, if we see the value of the count in our smart contract you can see that it's increased by one let's uh, execute the function a few times and let's now see the value of the count it's incre incremented to five the same way if we call the decrement function it is going to execute uh, this function for us which is a transaction i told you that if it's changing the state of the network then it's a transaction if you are reading something from the blockchain for example uh, using the uh, this function uh, the count function which is in our abi this will be a call to the blockchain and it won't cost you any gas so uh, this way uh, you can explore all this stuff these are the blocks or transactions are mined in these blocks this is the account that paid for all these transactions and uh, you can see that here we have our contract including all of these transactions so uh, you can explore this on your own there are a lot of stuff in here uh, you should definitely take a look because it's really important when you are building a full stack application you are going to use this ABI file uh, to interact with smart contracts and uh, I guess this is the end of the video uh, see you guys in the next one